What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So, this week we're going to get back into some more uh, kind of normal demo content. Um, my band's had some shows the past couple weeks, so that's why I've been doing the vlog stuff. I haven't been at home. Um, I hope you guys like the vlog videos, though. Just figured I'd try something different, you know, change it up a little bit. But uh, we're going to get back to some good old-fashioned demo content. So, if you saw my Brunswick vlog video... Uh, from my, my band was in Brunswick, Georgia a couple weeks ago. Um, I picked up a real cool guitar while I was there. This right here is a 2004 Gibson Les Paul Standard. You can see it's got a little bit of flame in it. It's not like, you know, super obvious or anything, but it do be having a little flame. Let's see if I can... There we go. Yeah, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but it's got some really cool lacquer checking, too. That really drew me in when I saw it. But yeah, I picked this guy up at a guitar shop called Slow Glow or Slow Go Guitars. I can't remember exactly the, what the name is. Um, <clears throat> but really cool shop. Uh, they build their own guitars there, which is real cool. Um, they had a whole awesome selection of stuff had a couple less pause but uh this one just kind of jumped out to me you know i wasn't really looking to buy a new guitar while i was like you know on a road trip for a show but um you know it just worked out that way so i picked this guy up i actually restrung it in the parking lot of the venue and played it that night so um let's see this guy's got a couple little modifications and stuff like that um <clears throat> I put the pickup in. You guys know I like my fastback custom pickups. So this is a fastback custom beard comber. Um, it still has the stock Gibson pickup in the neck. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, if you know what comes in a like 2004 standard, I'm guessing it's like some kind of burst bucker probably. Um, it's got these really cool... Diodario Planet Wave locking tuners. And the cool thing about these locking tuners is when you uh, when you tune them, they have like these little let's see if I can show it. They got like these little blades on the side that cut the string and it like it cuts the string when you turn it and it like tucks the end of the string down up underneath it. So you can't poke yourself on it. So you don't need a uh, peg winder. You don't need wire cutters or anything like that. Um, really cool guitar. A uh, really cool like thing. I've, I've never seen that on a locking tuner before. So I was real stoked about that. Um, I didn't realize that when I bought it. I figured that out when I was restraining it later. I was like, oh man. Like I knew it had the locking tuners on it. But I, I didn't know they did that. So that was pretty cool. Um, see what else here. The guitar is in really good shape. I mean, you know, it's got it's got some scratches and stuff. You know, being almost a 20-year-old guitar. Um, not really sure what's going on with this plate here, but I thought this was a cool little... I'm guessing someone just drew that on there or something, but it looks cool. Um, let's see, what else? So, I guess we'll get into this. I don't know if this is going to be visible or not, but I'm going to try to get in here really good. I'm not sure, and the guys at the shop weren't sure either, so fair enough, um, but you can't even, see, oh, there you go, you can see it a little bit. See this line on the back of the headstock right here? It's very faint, and when I first saw it, I thought maybe it was a headstock repair. Um, <clears throat> I'm still not 100% certain that it isn't. Uh, it could definitely be a headstock repair. Um, if it is, it's a really good one, though. Um, the guys at the shop were cool enough to let me... They had, like, a workshop area. Like I said, they built their own guitars. Uh, they had a workshop area. And they let me take this guitar back there and look at the truss rod and check the whole thing out to make sure everything was good with it. And when you take the truss rod cover off, you can't see that line through the... There's, like, no break. You know, there, you can't see it through the other side. The truss rod looked good. Um... It's like almost impossible to see 
So, I don't know what it is. It could just be like a weird lacquer line or like a scratch or something. Um, it just happens to be in a really inconvenient spot. Uh, it, it could be a headstock repair. If it is, it's like the best one I've ever seen because it's almost impossible to, to notice. So, considering how much the guitar was, uh, I really didn't mind if it was a headstock repair or not. If it was done that well and to be as cheap as this guitar was, I was super happy about it. Um, but yeah, the stock bridge pickup just wasn't really cutting it for me. Like I said, I played it that night at the show. Um, just wasn't really, you know, for the kind of stuff I do, it just wasn't really getting there. So, when I got home, I swapped it out for a Fastback Custom Beer Comer. Um, the neck pickup sounds good, though. So, I'm probably just going to leave it in for the time being. I did swap out a bit, this era of Gibson. The caps that come in here are, like, them tiny little bitty, like, pin size, like, pin head size caps. And I just do not like them at all. So I swapped those out for some Mojo Tone, like Bumblebee style caps. Um, <clears throat> they're just a lot higher quality capacitor. And yeah, so I did that. Put the beard comber in there. Put my strap locks on it. So this guy for the foreseeable future is uh, turning into my like main live guitar. I've already played two shows with it. I've only had it a couple weeks. Um, <clears throat> so we played a show last weekend in Tennessee, and I used it at that show. It, um, it's really light, and that's what I like about it for a live guitar. Um, I've been wanting a burst anyway, and I was looking at a whole bunch of different kinds, you know, tobacco bursts, uh, like more like vintage cherry bursts kind of stuff. And so I've been thinking about getting a burst anyway, and when I saw this guy, I was like, yeah, that's probably gonna happen. Um, like I said, the uh, the the weight of it was great. Uh, I know I like this like era of Les Pauls because my bike Les Pauls is a 2001, and I love that guitar. So the neck on this is really nice. It's like definitely a more um, I would probably say like a 60s style, like a slimmer neck. It's not real fat. So I liked that. It's still got the fret nibs on so these are the original frets. So the fret edges are really smooth. Yeah, the thing was just a player. I mean, I sat in the store and played it for a while and I was like, oh, I'm really trying not to buy a guitar today, but it'd be like that sometimes. So yeah, they hooked it up. And I'm really happy with it. The only other thing I'm gonna have to See if you can kind of see here. The only other thing I'm probably going to have to swap out soon is the bridge. So this happens on Les Paul's SG's. This style of bridge. I don't know if you can really see it or not. But these bridges over time have a, uh, they have a tendency to start collapsing on themselves. They'll kind of start to do this number in the middle. It's because they have, they have two posts on either side and no support in the middle. And if the strings are coming up at too far of an angle, they put too much downward pressure on the bridge, and they'll cause it to start collapsing in the middle. And this guy's doing that pretty bad. Um, it's not affecting anything, though. Normally what, you'll, normally what you'll get is, like, these two middle strings, your D and G strings. A lot of times they'll start to buzz on the open string. The D's, like, just barely almost starting to do it a little bit but the G's pretty good so eventually I will put a new bridge on this because uh, this one's getting pretty uh, pretty bad but that's an easy fix but yeah that is my new to me 2004 tobacco sunburst Gibson Les Paul standard with a very nice flame maple top so a lot of my, my buddies that have seen pictures of this guitar i've all been like oh man nice plain top because it in person the flame is really obvious but in pictures i'm guessing it doesn't like really show up quite as good but hopefully here on camera here you can see the flame really good because i loved this flame top and that's what really drew me to it so 
That's my new 2004 Gibson Les Paul Standard with some quirky mods to it. I said I really dig these Diodario Planet Waves locking tuners. So I did a demo uh, with this guy uh, running through the Will Putney STL Tones Amp Sim. <clears throat> I used a 5150 and a Bogner Ubershaw model blended together. Um, so that's what's going on with the guitar tones. Nothing too crazy in post, just a little EQ. Uh, yeah, so, hope you dig the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me a comment, let me know if you've picked up anything new lately. Or uh, if there's a particular thing you've had your eye on, like I've just been really in the burst thing lately. You see I got another guitar here that we'll probably do a review of soon. That's also very burst-ish, so. Yeah, that's kind of been my jam lately. So here's the demo. Thank you guys for checking out the video. I'll be back next week.